Thanks for joining us. I'm Lynn Brooks. And I'm Terry Brewer. Just ahead of the new school year, Alabama's adequate yearly progress scores are out. The State Department of Education released the scores today. They come from testing and measures required by the federal No Child Left Behind Act. Here's the big question. How did our local schools do? In our top story at 5 WVUA's Candace Murphy takes a look at the Tuscaloosa City and County Schools. Both the Tuscaloosa City and County School Systems did not make adequate yearly progress on a system-wide basis for the past school year. AYP scores are intended to show student progress toward achieving 100% proficiency in reading and math. According to city and county school leaders, there are schools labeled as failing that met the majority of their goals but did not achieve a 100% score. No, they're not meeting the standard that's established nationally. However, they are succeeding. Their, uh, their academic performance has increased year after year after year. For the district, we have failed to make AYP in all categories for pre, uh, two years. And so that puts us in district improvement, meaning that we will have to come up with a plan to improve the schools, uh, and, and each school will align their plan to our plan. Both systems say they are taking steps to reach the annual measurable objectives set by the law. We're wanting to look at those students that may be partially proficient, that may be partially meeting the standards, but they're really close to being fully proficient. And, and we want to implement RTI, response to instruction, and make sure that those teachers are providing the skills-based interventions that those students need. Making sure students are fully engaged in what's going on, and the material is relevant for them, and that uh, we as educators, both at school level and the uh, district level, uh, we are meeting the needs and we are providing those materials and that instruction that those students need to make that progress. With the new school year just around the corner, school leaders remind parents one way to help your child improve is to become an active part of their learning process. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Candace Murphy, WVUA News. Adequate yearly progress scores are determined through a pretty complex system. So to get more complete understanding on how your child system and individual school scored and what all of it means, just go to our website, WVUATV.com, click Numbers and Links, there, click Adequate Yearly Progress Scores for much more in-detail information. With school starting soon, parents will have a chance to save money this weekend during the annual Alabama Sales Tax Holiday. The Sales Tax Holiday runs from Friday at 12.01 a.m. through Sunday. It waives sales tax from items like clothing, school supplies, and uniforms, among other back-to-school items. Visit WVUATV.com numbers and links for more on what's included in the holiday and what local governments are lifting their local sales taxes during the sales tax holiday. And if you or someone you know needs some help getting school supplies, the Tuscaloosa Backpack Coalition says it's here to help. At their event this weekend, they saw a huge turnout from families needing supplies. You can call the Backpack Hotline at 205-225-2069. Again, 205-225-2069. Alabama has a new state Supreme Court Chief Justice, and he's from Tuscaloosa. Alabama Governor Robert Bentley named his Chief of Staff, Chuck Malone, as the new Chief Justice today. Malone was a circuit judge here in Tuscaloosa County before resigning to become Bentley's chief of staff in January. He will replace Sue Bell Cobb, who resigned from the state's highest court. Malone says he has not decided whether he will seek election next year to a full six-year term. Bentley says his finance director, David Perry, will become his new chief of staff. Midnight tonight is the deadline for a deal on the nation's debt limit. A compromise was finally reached last night, and leaders on both sides are scrambling to get the votes needed to pass the agreement. The package cuts spending and guarantees further deficit reduction steps. The announcement brought positive results in global markets jittery over the prospect of Washington coming up empty on its bills. Although the news brought positive results, neither side got exactly what they wanted. Did we get 100% of the discretionary cuts we were looking for? No, we got two-thirds. That's better than zero. I'll take two-thirds in my direction than anything else, and we're going in our direction. This legislation is typical for compromise legislation. Neither side got what they wanted, but it's the essence of compromise. I'm told the House will be voting on this sometime this evening. I'm going to work to see if we can vote today. That's not all assured but we're working on that.
The deadline for the voting is tonight at midnight. Treasury Department officials say the U.S. will not be able to pay its bills if lawmakers don't raise the debt ceiling by tonight. On your home team, Crime Watch, new information that might help you to help investigators catch a bank robbery suspect. The FBI believes the person responsible for a bank robbery Friday afternoon in Cottondale is likely the same person who robbed a Brookwood bank two weeks ago. Today, Tuscaloosa police released new surveillance images from the Cottondale robbery at the Bank of Tuscaloosa on University Boulevard. You can see that those images are pretty clear. Take a look and see if you recognize that suspect. Also, there is a surveillance picture from the Brookwood robbery that happened at a re the Regions Bank on Highway 216. Looks like a man, but investigators in both cases say it may be a woman with a drawn-on beard leaving in a maroon car. If you have information on either case, you can call the FBI or Tuscaloosa Police at 205-349-2121. And as always, you can make a confidential call to Crime Stoppers, their number 205-752-STOP. North Star Emergency Medical Systems is now the only ambulance service provider for all of Tuscaloosa County. North Star took control of the entire county at midnight. North Star says it has added seven vehicles to its fleet to take on the extra calls. They've also hired close to 30 new employees, and those numbers are expected to increase over the next 30 days. Edward Calloway, Edgar Calloway, the operations director for North Star, says he believes the expansion will lead to a safer Tuscaloosa County. And we apologize for that technical difficulty. The city of Tuscaloosa decided on North Star to be the only service provider for the city during last week's public safety com committee meeting. After that, rural Metro stepped down as a service provider for Tuscaloosa County. And drivers along McFarland Boulevard near Jack Warner Parkway met with some delays this afternoon. The trailer of a debris truck was overturned. Witnesses on the scene tell us there were no injuries and the accident was caused by a blown tire. Well, another big act is headed to the Tuscaloosa Amphitheater stage. This act is one from Alabama. That's right. In fact, it is Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> and the show will coincide with Alabama's first home football game. The band Alabama will be live in concert at the Tuscaloosa Amphitheater Friday, September 2nd at 7.30. All proceeds benefit the Tuscaloosa Storm Recovery Fund. Tickets go on sale Friday, August 5th at 10 a.m. Tickets can also be purchased online at Ticketmaster.com and at the Tuscaloosa Amphitheater box office or charged by phone 1-800-754-3000.